Great sex to me is when the experience is so memorable and so enticing that you can be not with her at any given time. You can be on a train or on a plane or somewhere and just think about that experience and it can get you to damn near come. Good sex is when time collapses, when you're just in a different world. It's having that connection knowing that the only focus on the other person's mind is me and them in this moment. An explosive reaction of all senses. I wanna please you and really take my time um, and take your time to please me. Foreplay, don't skip the foreplay. That's a big requirement. It's like any art, the drama is necessary. So yeah, and oh, toys are welcome. <laughs> Oh, hey there lovers and friends. This video is sponsored by Lovers, who is now my friend, because this is part two in a collaboration series that I'm doing with them. First up, we did women, and today we are doing cisgendered men. Lovers is the perfect partner for this because for nearly 40 years, they have been working to empower and inspire people into having incredible sexual experiences on their terms. Now, they are an adult store that has a range of products that I'm going to read off because it's lengthy. Condoms, lubricants, lingerie, hosiery, dildos, vibrators, anal stimulators, massagers, masturbators, penis rings, penis pumps, strap-ons, gender affirmation products, sex swings, and other furniture, a range of kink products, massage oils, CBD, books, games, and here's the kicker, and even more than that. So if you guys are interested in learning more about them and you already know what you want to get, go into the info box right now to redeem a 20% offer just specially from me to you. But if you need some inspiration and you came here for some education, you've come to the right place. These men got raw, got real, and I was really inspired by their vulnerability. And in the spirit of that, I had to ask a really important question. Why are dialogues like this, specifically with men, so damn rare? I think men don't speak to each other about sex as comfortable, or as comfortable as women. Yeah, like women are like, yeah. So I set the room to 68, it was very cool. Right, 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 right. right. Shared pita right. chips, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, it's, it's, it's very detailed. Yeah, it's it's like, more yeah. shared. It's like I came, I saw a conquer. Mm -hmm. I like to talk about sex a lot. Yeah. Especially with my friends. And I guess it's different for gay men. Well, that's actually <laughs> I, It was really easy to get here. You took no convincing. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> all right, <laughs> down. Everybody else gave me the like, okay, so what's this video about, folks? Uh, <laughs> and then after they agreed, they called again for follow-up questions. Well, you know sure. what? I think it might be, maybe it's a paranoia, like if we speak, then we're never going to get sex again. I think straight men, maybe we're scared of <laughs> like, Shane's going to tell all the girls and we're never going to get it. See, I, I think talking about sex between guys is typically very like braggadocious. Like it's just to say like, oh, I did this. Mm. But when you talk about like the details of sex, that's way more intimate. Yeah. And like that intimacy, most men, I find, get weirded out even talking about like, the specifics of how a girl touched their yeah. cock. Yeah, totally. like like you mentioned those details, and everyone's just like, "Oh, I must be gay," because I remember these details. So, how do you what? learn about new techniques, new things, new methods of orgasm, new methods of finding pleasure? If you're not having a focus group amongst yourself to talk about your bodies and the different ways you can find pleasure out of them, how do you discover new things? I think it comes out like a joke. I mean, my friends and I always talk about oral sex, like you know, getting head from a girl, and you know, it was it was always kind of like a joke. We started out talking about like getting the twister blister, or getting the olive garden, getting the pepper grinder, you know? <laughs> and it's like, it's a joke, but it's like, we're actually talking about something that's very pleasurable for us, you know? And it's like, we can't really, I think maybe us, we're almost, like, that's our way of like saying like, yeah, that's the best way to get oral sex. So after we got that out of the way, now it's time for the fun stuff. Orgasm, what's been your worst, your best, and your go-to? I want communication in the bedroom. Uh-huh. You know? Because, again, if I get them off and they enjoyed every moment of it, then that would make my orgasm a lot better. Because I've had terrible sexual experiences that... Okay, I was looking up with one guy, and then he was just like, are you close? And immediately, that question... Took away from you. Yeah, and he was like, wait, yeah. am I supposed to be? And then I like, went are you into, rushing me? Yeah, yeah, and I went into yeah. this whole like panic in right. my head, and then oh, it got no. performance anxiety, right. and I was like, that's it? It's gone. <laughs> you wanna, you wanna, it's almost yeah. like you want all five senses yeah. to be in the moment. Yeah, like, yeah. all yeah. five. Like, Absolutely. I want to hear you. I want to feel you, mm -hmm. taste you. Like, mm -hmm. the, all of your senses are just like lit up. And like, even with what he just said, like, we're not rushing to get there. Like, when you can like really, what I've learned even with myself is like, breathing is a lot to do with it because you find yourself like holding it like mm -hmm. a lot of times because mm -hmm. of what you're doing. So if you actually relax 
and breathe, you kind of center yourself and fall into the moment that you're in. And like, mm -hmm. it makes it so much better and it lasts longer. And so I think if you can somehow incorporate all fives, and I want to hear you, like, yeah. I think yes. um, <laughs> even with like masturbating, I've learned like, I don't even have to visually see it or think it, like I could be listening to it. Do you guys believe in foreplay? What are your thoughts on foreplay? Of course. Yes. Foreplay yeah. is amazing. But I've learned, and if you're having, to me, like kissing and slowly taking your clothes off and like, touching and all of this because if you can have amazing foreplay for whatever 20 30 minutes before sex your sex is now that much greater i think mm -hmm. yeah for sure and it's like exploring each other's bodies totally. yeah. it's a very intimate act mm -hmm. and you know the best way to get to know someone is through having sex and this might be a special group though because i talked to a lot of dudes who were like I do it kind of like how I give a birthday hand job, like I'm <laughs> supposed to, or like the, the dream has a song, like I could give a fuck about the foreplay. Nah. It's all about sex. And but sex, that's not the girl sex. you love. That's not yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's not really good sex. You do the foreplay because, like, I, I found that it's almost like I think girls get a little nastier after they have their first orgasm, you know. So even if they have any kind of reservation prior to that, like, oh, I don't want you to see my body, or I'm going to keep my shirt on, or you know, the, the Winnie the Pooh style, like whatever it might be. <laughs> Like, <laughs> after you make the no, orgasm, I think there's just the comfortability, you know, just shirt on, ducktails, whatever, ooh, like whatever it may be. There's a comfortability that they feel like girls grow and they, they're down to just whatever after that, to the point, I don't know. <laughs> I'm screaming. Foreplay is special. I think it gets lost. Like, yeah. people lose it yeah. now. It's well, just like, like, don't rush to, like, get there. Like. I want to take your clothes off, take my mm, clothes, like yeah. I want to explore like it's every- It's something very sexy about undressing each other, yeah. kissing and stuff like that. But also like going to back to your point earlier, like what makes a great orgasm, this is it. Like it's part of the show. Like, yeah, right, if you're right. watching theater the ritual. and you just see the main number, it's going to be like, okay, that was not yeah. worth my money. Is there like a physical recipe? Like I like my balls pulled or held. Hold I also right. like- pressure on the mind area. Yeah. See, I feel like it's the opposite for guys. Well, at least for me, like, yeah. for women it might be here, but for me it's like right under the balls. If you hold oh, it gooch. right Ooh, there, yes. right before you come, like, it's that right there. Oh, it's insane. explosive. To just piggyback on that, like, the more my entire cock and balls, the whole area can get in, involved, like, the way more intense it is. Because most of the time it's just to focus on, like, my, the dick itself, or right? even this, like, the head. It's like, but if I have a whole, like organ down here that loves feeling like anything. So the more I can feel, the more intense it gets. It depends. I mean, it can get me up a lot of ways. Um, nipple play is one of them. Uh, you can come from just nipple play? Shut the fuck yeah. up. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you too. Without, what? I've come without touching myself. So what? Like, that talent. That's talent. Insane. Talent. But it, I was what? We, it, I've totally. seen people coming through like Kegels. Yeah. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. you know, whatever gets you off, gets you off. So when you get a nipple orgasm, do you ejaculate? Yeah. Is there such yeah. thing as a bad orgasm? Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah like, bad way to get there, not a bad orgasm. Uh, I, I've had like underwhelming mm -hmm. orgasms. Yeah. Where yeah. it's like, you know, yeah. like, it's just like, it's like it happens, but you're like, oh, like I've tried to prevent orgasm and not been able to actually stop it. And then the actual orgasm is like this, really sad thing. I know exactly yeah. what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, it's like, it's like, oh, damn, I, like, I, I didn't want that to happen yet. Yeah. So you like don't indulge the feeling. And you didn't really right. commit to it. Yeah. So it's kind of yeah. Work, but yeah. orgasm's right. like, no, I'm still coming through. You're not gonna stop. Right. Yeah. You can hold it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like, am I early? Oh, sorry, y'all. <laughs> I'll come back at six. Right, right, right. When you say there's a bad way to get there, what does that mean? I mean, I've had sex one time in particular, and um, I didn't want to, and so it almost felt like I was doing it to appease. Um, her like to mm, appease person. you know what I'm saying so like mm, mm. it's not that I don't mm. like you or I didn't care I just didn't I was kind of over <laughs> our relationship and over where we were and then you jump on top of me and start doing this like yeah yeah, yeah. you're saying like there's like an emotional disconnect there right, right. so yeah, yeah, yeah. That's physically right. That's I still right. worked but I was kind of like and then 
when I was done, I was like, I really didn't want to do that, but okay. Over 75% of men achieve orgasm regularly during sex, and that is in large part due to the fact that the penis is usually the main event. And while that is wonderful, there's also a darker side to that. Because of the fact that the penis takes up so much attention and there is so much focal point on that in the media and how we learn about sex, men don't often get encouraged to discover other parts of their body, other erogenous zones. So I asked this group, outside of their penis, where else brings them pleasure? That is one of my main goals in 2019. <laughs> Do tell. <laughs> no, as, as a gay man, I love topping. Mm. And that's usually my go-to position in sex. And I want to like bottoming. <laughs> so it's one of those things that like I, you know, I do like butt stuff and other things. Like I like nipple play and all yeah. that. Yeah. I think life is so long, you can't do the same thing forever. So even whether you're spending it with one partner or you want to be single and do it with many, like you're bound to want to explore like yeah. more things. Yeah, and I think there's like this big stigma around like any butthole pleasures with guys, mm -hmm. straight guys in particular being like, oh, well, are you sure you're not gay if you like it, your yeah. butt being touched? Yeah. But now I'm just like, well, I, I have explored that mm -hmm. and I am so willing to talk to any guy about it because it's like, yeah. look, it's a whole new world that, yeah. that, you, that we didn't know about. No before. pun intended. Like, you're missing out if you're not playing. Like, but you see that in shows and movies where like the doctors will stick her finger up a guy's butt and yes. his climax is like, you four. Yeah, yeah, I think that for those, for, for straight men who don't know anything about the, the nether region or the other region, I think that you're, you're being ignorant, honestly. I think you, you got to experience life. You know? I mean, sex to me is like food. I mean, some people like their food to touch. Some people like their food separated. Some people like bitter melons. Some people don't. And I feel like there's so many varieties of food that will bring you joy and pleasure. And same mm -hmm. thing with sex. What's so fascinating about that is that in many ways, what we're saying is you need to get permission to explore your own body. Mm. Whether it's societal permission or permission it. from your partner. Yeah. And I hate that. Like five years ago, you would have never heard me talk about my butthole at all. It's a comfort thing. And it's also yeah. like a masculine feminine thing in society. <clears throat> like people, like you're not gonna sit in a group of your homies or friends if you're not comfortable with me like yo yeah like i let this happen yeah, in my, my butt, butt or like me. whatever whatever because then everybody turns and looks at you like are you gay are you this are mm -hmm. you that like it's a big thing so then yeah. people keep hush and either they're not going to try it and stay in this lane so that they can meet the comfort of everybody else or you're going to step outside and be a little uncomfortable and either keep it to yourself or share it so i think it's Masculinity is so weird to me. Like, it's so frightening. Have you guys ever found uh, pleasure from like, cleaning your ears out? Like Q-tips? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like yeah. sexual I, pleasure? Yeah. <laughs> like almost like, like, like it's like, a, I mean, not like it's like, I don't know, I found like sometimes I'm sitting, I'm cleaning my ears, I'm like, shit, like, if I really focus, I think I could like, kind of get aroused in a way, you know? <laughs> Like it's that it feels that good sometimes, and I'm like, yo, like I just, I, there's some like somewhere there's a nerve that is directly from my ear to my dick, like easily. Like, <laughs> well, yeah, but that's like I don't know. Whispering your ear. Like, you know what's funny is I actually talked about Q-tips um, on this show once. Everyone was like, what, what? Because I am a big fan of combining sensations, oh, yeah. right? Like, because if you're cleaning out your own ear with a Q-tip and you're getting head at the same time. Oh my time, god, you just blew my mind. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I got some fucking things to do. Yeah. <laughs> what are some unexpected places, methods, techniques, ways that you have found pleasure? Mm. You don't have to try and top the Q-tip story. I mean, right? That's pretty hard to come after. Yeah. That. Yeah. I really like it when uh, I'm having uh, making out or having sex at all and someone just like pulls my hair, like not to like yank me somewhere, but just to like grab it. Like it's, it adds to everything else. It just makes it so much better. Yeah, I guess those, those little tiny sensations, like nipple play, or you know, mm -hmm. like getting head yeah, while you're being nipple played is really sensational. Oh, having somebody else jag me off. That was new for me because I I'm very much in like being in control. Yeah. Um, mm. So that was like insane because I just it actually was like a better moment because I I remember my feet almost like 
curling. Were they hands. like an aficionado? Because I've heard a lot of men say they hate getting hand jobs because they're a pro. Like they know what to yeah. do yeah, so perfectly. Know our, yeah, yeah so when someone body. else is down there, you're like. We know, you know, we know when, when like, you're like trying to just, oh God, it's his birthday. Let me jack him off real quick. Or it's like, you know, <laughs> yeah. I want to I wanna really, I want to pleasure him right now. You know? There, I heard somebody say the other day, you can tell how much somebody cares about you by how they give you head <laughs> or your hand job. Because guy or girl, whatever, how they give you head will let you know how they feel about you. Because when you don't, when they don't care, like it's very, I'm doing it because it's part of the sexual act versus like, it's very, like I'm I need about to, do to this. please my man. Like it's very you know what's crazy about that. So true. Cause I was in a serious relationship and this girl would just not let me give her head. So sex toys and men have a very complex relationship. From what I've gathered, either they're very comfortable and well-versed or they don't want to talk or touch them at all. And that has to change because not only does it affect them and their opportunities to experience pleasure, but in many cases, it can affect their partner as well. So I thought the best way for us to really get to the root of why this wall is there is to talk about it. So I asked this group of men, what are their true feelings, like true feelings about sex toys in the bedroom? Yes, I do like using toys. Um, I, Well, at least for gay sex, I feel like it's like, a precursor, it's part of the whole thing. Like, they get prepped up and then loosen up, and then I'm the main event. <laughs> you kind of got me. You know? What are your go tos? Um, there's like little plugs and stuff, dildos usually. Um, yeah. And, but I haven't done nipple clamps and stuff, which I really want to try to You definitely should. Yeah. There's actually one that's a pump and it sucks, it suctions your nipple in, oh. into which your nipple gets like that much into it. So I, I, I have like a vibrating plug that I used with someone last year and like, a, well, just like experience, like using it on her and then getting to experience it myself at the same time was, uh, it was like, Another mind blowing thing. I was just like, "What? This is why they're called toys." Yeah. Like I, didn't, I before I like never thought like we're playing with them together like the same thing because I always have like thought of toys basically unless it's like a flashlight to be girls things. Yeah. Right. So, but like I just this week bought my current girlfriend a vibrator because I was like, no, I want to have fun playing with her with this toy. Yeah. yeah. Right. And, and if it happens to slide back on the gooch, yeah, so I be it. I went too. I actually gave one of my straight friends um, a vibrator, the little thing for your, it, it goes into your asshole and also has like little the little nub to go in your gooch. Nuts. Yeah. That'd be awesome. And it just yeah. vibrates. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, you're welcome. Why is there such a stigma around toys and male sexual play? I think most guys only know of like fleshlight. Yeah. Like, you know, so yeah. I don't think that yeah. it's something Have that... you even tried a fleshlight before? Oh uh, yeah, once. But I tried flashlights. Like, I tried vibrating flashlights. I just treat it as like this is not something that I use. You know what I mean? I mm -hmm. always see like toys are just like, like even even though this is for men, I'm like no, I'm not that type of dude. You yeah. know, I'm not like, yeah. like, like I can this still going, I can going still going get right. girls. Like I've always felt like toys are like <laughs> man, like the mannequins and the blow ups or someone that right. can't get like a partner. You know what I'm saying? I totally second that. I've had that like narrative play through my head. Like there have been so many times where I like wanted to buy a toy. I was like, no. Then I'm like more pathetic than I am for masturbating more. Like with it, like, <laughs> yeah. it's like I do it and like, now, be like, now I have a toy. You're like, look at you, look yeah, at you. Like, hey, oh yeah, you totally. But, but that was like something I told myself. And now it's just like, I, I can't believe I felt that way, but like, it's nice to know other people felt that way. So at least thought- No, because that, that's how you're programmed. There's yeah. a shame. Yeah. Uh, attached yeah. to yeah. sex. I think it's pretty apparent that this is a really special, self-aware group of men. And given the society that we currently exist in, I can only assume that their path to becoming the person they are today wasn't a linear or simple one. So I asked them, if you could go back in time and give yourself when you were 12 years old or 20 years old, some straight up advice about sex in your body, what would you say? I think you're younger, you're agile, like you're able to like do all these things. So I would tell them I'd definitely like explore more. Like it's not just what you are taught in books or your mom and dad tell you, or you know, even what you watch on porn, like there's so much mm -hmm. um, because you restrict yourself. You watch a certain type of porn, you come from a certain family and people mm -hmm. tell you to do this and do that. Mm -hmm. So like 
you're already in a box. But if you choose to step outside of that, I think there's so like even hearing some of this stuff, it's like damn, like no, I gotta try that. Like, if I could tell myself something, it'd be there's no shame in sex. Yes. There's no shame in pleasuring yourself, and you shouldn't feel ashamed of your body mm -hmm. and what makes you feel good. Mm -hmm. and yeah, that's it. And then what he said, explore. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I used to think like just I would tell myself be comfortable because there's, you're like, there's nothing to worry about. Yeah. Like if someone, if you're with someone and they don't take what you think or feel into consideration, then they're not the person for you and it's not nothing to do with you, mm -hmm. right? But I've never even had someone go, or like if I tell them a preference or something I like, no one's been like, hell no, I'm not into that. Everyone's like so accommodating and like, right. I'm, I mean, I'm there for them and they're there for me. Like, mm -hmm. what else are we gonna do? Mm -hmm. And I think before I just didn't have that same like mentality, it's like no, like it's I have to please them, otherwise they're gonna go fuck some other guy. So like don't, I would say like don't go into it even thinking like I'm supposed to have sex right now. Just have a a, a sexual experience. Yes. If it turns into sex, cool. If it doesn't turn into sex, that's all right too. Because I think you, get, I think when I when I was younger, I set expectations like, oh, okay, we're all alone, we're by ourselves, no parents. We're supposed to have sex right now. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, and you go into that, like thinking the whole time, like, all right, this is the first thing I'm supposed to do. This is the second thing I'm supposed to do. This is the third, you know, exactly. you have this list. And I think you can't, like, you can't admit to yourself, like, hey, let's just please each other right now. You know, yeah. it's like, you're, it's like this, it's a, it's a man, it's a, it's a masculinity thing, I think. You know, like, I'm supposed to, I'm supposed to make her fucking come six times and then give her so much dick that she can't even walk tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. 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 No, but it's also like, you know, that junior high school age when you're like, you're a boy becoming a man and then, you know, vis-a-vis -vis a man, you know, it's a man, masculine world. But like, I feel like we're, we're increasingly becoming more high school. Like the whole world became a cafeteria, especially Instagram, yeah. internet. Like we're all like, oh, it's close to popular kids. This is, you know, so now yeah. we have to fall in line. It's like, it's bullshit. They don't need to do anything. Just, just be you and just be brave, you know? Gay men? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you say gay men instead of gay men? Yeah. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest with you guys, this is the most fun I've had shooting a video in a very long time. That's largely in part to the fact that the dudes in this video, I actually consider friends. As I said in the beginning, I had a really hard time casting this, so I had to go through my phone and find men that I knew were comfortable having these discussions in private with me, and I prayed that they would do it justice in public, and I really think that they did. So shout out to my homies. In the info box below, you can find some of their socials, and of course, in the info box, you can find more information on the sponsor of this video, which is Lovers, and a link to their website, and then more information on how to utilize that promo code so that you can get your sex toy kit started or you can get it boosted up wherever you're at they definitely have something for you um, but I'm glad that you were here on this video for me and for these men but your job ain't done you know in the comment section that's everyone's favorite part of any video especially you know if this is a discussion that you haven't heard before I want to hear what you thought about it and if you are a man watching this video chime in you know how do you experience pleasure what are some unique ways that you have found pleasure and what are some taboos you've had to overcome or are still working to overcome. It's a lot of questions. I'll put them in the info box too. All right. Uh, yeah, I used to think about you when I had no one to talk to. Had a bougie kind of moody bouncing when you walked through. And you used to get that Brazilian wax. Yeah, I put that on a wax. Cell phone, pull it out the Zillion bag. How you getting stacks? Where they flying you? Where you flying to? Oh, I see you in the island. Mama call, but your cell phone always silent. You a pirate, floating overseas for the diamond. Ain't surprising.